Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and I have a special unboxing today. I'm going to be looking at this kit. This is the Akiyaku number one. So you might be able to see across here. So this is the uh, Japanese kanji, Akiyaku, which means bad guy or bad character and Ichigo, which is number one. Now this is actually a I guess it's a design that came from the mind of Miyazaki Hayao, who is uh, better known as the director from Studio Ghibli. So you'll probably understand uh, or know of his uh, movies. But this is from his little, um, I guess a little notebook. So there is a book that it can be purchased and it has a whole bunch of sketches. And this is one of those interesting sketches in that book. So very much like a land tank. You actually see got the, the pig soldiers down here. So this is quite colloquially known as a pig tank as well. I quite often call this the pig tank. And it's one seventy second scale, but when we open it up, you'll see how it is actually quite large. So it is like a land ship, I guess they call them. A very big tank. Okay, so let's have a close look from the top camera. There's the box art there. So this is actually produced by Asuka, but you'll see that this is actually a sticker and underneath the original uh, branding was for Tasca. So Asuka does have all the Tasca type molds now and this particular kit is only available as a Japanese release and this version, they do do a few different versions, is a quite a rare one which has the full complement of figures. There is also another version with the short barrel and this is the full long barrel version as per the artwork. Now you can see we've got a little lookout, lookout tower here a variety of turrets all around the tank and has very much the design from a World War One tank. It's got a little scrape guard at the back which is like off a, uh, a Renault uh, FT-17 and then at the front there's got a little bumper as well. I'll have a close look here. There's a photo of the, this kit that's actually been built with a full array of figures. That's the cover of the actual book with the uh, which has got all those different sketches inside. You can just see it there, that's actually an interior view of this. Doesn't look great. Really find that interesting. Okay, and then on the other side, what have we got? We've got various views of the tank itself. You can see there's the little bumper, fully armored side section here with various panels, the front view, and a top view. So there's actually three guns on the turret. So you've got the larger cannon, smaller cannon, and there's like a little machine gun as well. And a little skid plate. Okay, so how about we have a closer look inside. Let's open it up. Okay, so we have uh, the dark yellow colored plastics. Quite a variety of them. You can see some of the figurines just in the bags here. So I'm going to move this across and we'll have a look at each bag as we go. Alright, so this one's got a multitude of similar sprue. Okay, so these ones here, as you can imagine, you need a lot of these D sprue because these have actually got the you call these the tread I guess for the tracks so it does have rubber tracks as well which I'll show you later on and then these are the I guess the, the grippy bits that you glue onto the top you drive sprockets idler wheels all around here and then on this side we have the additional parts which is the guns so the main guns here this is a shaft for the lookout tower which actually pops up and down and then we've got all these machine guns in ball mounts and multi cannons there as well. So I've got to do a bit of a close up and we'll have a closer look at some of this. Let me put these aside because these are pretty much the same. And we'll have a look at this. Okay, so we've got multiples of this one. You can see these are the these are the tread parts for the rubber tracks. A whole heap of those. Got the drive wheel here, the sprocket. All the little idler wheels. And then the additional sprue. This is where we have got the triple machine gun here. 
in the elevating mount. Got the bases of a turret here. There's a little dome turret there with some machine guns on it. Or probably cannons actually. They're pretty chunky, aren't they? So you can see how there's some slide molding. I'm actually molded inside so you can get that the voids on the insides of the guns. We've got a track tensioner here. So a screw will actually go through there and you'll be able to slide that back and forth just to make sure the, the track tension is right. Multitude of machine guns here and their ball mounts. And then there's half of the main gun. So there's actually two sprue of this type so that you've got each half together and then there's um, antennas which go on the top of the... actually are they on top of the turret or on the back? can't remember. But there's some little bits and pieces there. Okay, so that's one bag out of the way. Now let's see. This one's a pretty special bag. It's got all big chunky bits in it. So these are the track covers, the turret and the turret base. Well, these are really nice because there's quite a bit of surface detail model on these. Really pronounced rivets. And then there's this cast texture as well. Probably more pronounced on the turret itself. That makes it look like the cast metal structures. See so these are opening sections here. So the little doors where the pigs can actually come in and out. There's doorways on each side. And you can actually have those glued open or closed. There's a little turret there. Was a, some of the ball mounted machine guns would fit in those. And here as well. Let's have a close look and I'll see if I can show you that surface detail. Alright, if I get it just on the right angle, you might be able to see that now. Okay, let's, let's look at this one actually. So this is the right way up. There's actually a cap that goes across here. And I think there's some guns on the top of that little protrusion as well. You might notice like on a Mark 1 or a Mark 2 um, tank from World War 1 that they had these sort of protrusions on the sides of the tanks. You see how it's got that sort of tadpole shape there. So some good cast texture actually on the Let's see if I can get the reflections right. Yeah, you'll probably be able to see that there. There's a couple of gun turrets there as well. And then the main gun through the front with the, the three different barrels. Opening hatch. And then there's the base of the turret. And a pretty common keying system. You can actually key that into the hull and you'll be able to rotate that once it's completed. On the inside you'll be able to see the shafts. These are the take all the, the drive wheels. And then the base of the turret there. Get a little support. So we'll have the guns mounted across the L brackets so they can rotate up and down. And then there's not much happening inside the, the turret itself. Okay, but nicely moulded. Okay, what do we have now? So this is a pretty big set of sprue. I'm getting it a bit tighter there. So here we have the the whole bottom. Okay, so there's the base of the tank. So it'll normally be sitting like this. And then we have the sides of the tank, which is also the supports for the tracks. Okay, so again we've got the, the shafts here for support or drive wheels. Well, you might notice just on the base of the hull here there's this very strange channel. That's because there's another set of tracks that actually goes through the center. So you've got track here, track here, and then a central track as well. We have these sections here. So this would be the front of the tank and there's a little bull bar that goes across the front. You can see the bull bar just there. These big studs. And there's a central drive. So these are the sections which go on the inside there. Let's get a closer look. Alright, let's just get this focused. Alright, so they look like little cupolas on the bottom. So maybe they are. Maybe they stick their head down there and they look through all those little viewports. Drive goes through the center here. And then you've got these details here where the shafts that come out of there and they support this bull bar or bumper. And see here on the sides, really nice sort of riveted detail. 
it's a bit on this side as well. So there's all the, the shafts for the wheels. Now before I talked about the tensioning system, so this is where the screw goes through to tension. So you have the yellow eye of the wheel out here, and then you tighten up the screw and loosen or tighten up the wheel to get the tension right. There's a detail on that central drive. See little shocks, they're all molded in these sections. A little skid plate at the back. I don't know what you call that. It's a skid plate, I guess. Little cupola and some other bits. Okay, what else we have? All right, we've got this piece here. All the small detail parts, I guess. Okay, so we've got the mantlet for the gun. We've got some bigger turrets, I guess. I think these are the turrets that actually go on the base of the, or the back of the turret, the main turret. More little turrets there again. And then we've got the sides here, which is actually the lookout. And lookout's a big pogo stick looking thing in the middle of the tank. I'll show you a bit later. There's a the back section. Some extensions for the mud guards. That's a mount for the guns. Little exhaust and another cupola there. It's getting in a bit tighter. So there's a big, big cupola there. Small ones, got a variety of hatches. They're the four sides to make that cylindrical lookout tower. That's a door for lookout tower. The back support. There's a gun support with the gun mantlets right there. Big turrets. And more hatches and such. Okay, from there we've got our track. So here's the robbery tracks. Don't have a lot of detail on them at the moment because we're going to be gluing on all those, those big Spady details we looked at at the beginning. That's the central track. That's one that goes down the center of the the tank. Let's see if you can get in there a bit tighter. You can see how there's some locating lugs. So that's where you glue on the, the parts. And then the other side's got the guides that go over the, the drive wheels. And this is the uh, smaller ones. And the driving section on this side. And you'll see how flexible these are. Okay, very old school, but makes assembling a lot easier. And you can see how there's just this tongue system. We just locked it into place on the other end, and then it's just glued into place. Okay, so these are the rubber tracks. And then we get into, what else we got here? Oh, we've got the top of the hull. It's pretty important. Oops, still a staple here. that out of the way. Okay, so 70 second scale shows you just how big this is because this is more like the size of a big 35th scale tank. So you can see there. So this is actually the front end is here. Actually, no, it's not. Got that all wrong. This should be the front end because the turret's here. This is where the lookout tower goes. So it can be retracted and it's actually sprung loaded. So when you press it down, it'll pop up. Really nice, I like that. So still some cast detail across the front. Got the hatches and the covers. So if this was a German tank, this would be for the machine gun and that would be for the driver. Don't actually know what the layout of this is. Just a support there, you'll be cutting that out for the, the main turret to sit on. Your observation tower here, and then some more turrets with more guns at the back. Another little doorway. And I guess you can see by the size of the doorways how actually really small the people are, or how big this tank is. So there you go. So that is the 
hull and then what have we got left here? I've got this little packet here. A bit hard to see there, so I better bring this across. So these are a whole bunch of poly caps and there's some springs and screws in there too. So there's a long spring right here. That's for the retractable observation deck. All these little white parts are a soft vinyl poly cap. So these hold uh, the turrets in place so you can actually rotate them after you finish assembling. And then there's two screws in there as well and therefore adjusting the tension on the tracks. Okay, and from there we've got some of my favourite bits. We've got figures. So let's just take this staple out as well. So this set of figures there, I think this is included in some of the other sets as well, the more basic sets. So you may only get this particular one, which has got the butler, the pet pig, we've got the chef, and then we've got a couple of soldiers. Actually, these are engineers, I think they're wearing singlets. They're really nicely sculpted, really cute. You can see by the size of my hand. So these are one to 72 scale. So roughly the same height as a 72nd scale human. So very cute indeed. And when it doesn't end there, we've got this packet here. And these are all the same, I'm pretty sure. So you get four sprue of these fellows. And these are the soldiers. They've got the, the pistols with the holsters. They've got their goggles now, and this one with the goggle up. And see how well they're molded too. They don't have pronounced mold lines. Really nice detail. Okay, so with four packets, so that's that's 12 of those figures. So what are we up to? So five in the first lot, 12 in that. So that's 17. And here's a final packet. So we have the commander. He's got the peak cap on. And oh, then two more of these soldier type, the goggles down. So commander also has molded in medals. Really cute. And then we have some clear parts. A bit hard to see there, so I'll bring my black back across. Okay, so we've got cupolas. So the advantage of the clear is we can actually mask off the, the glass on the cupolas and paint that over so it'll remain transparent. Got a lens here for the spotlight. And then these are all the lookout windows for the observation um, tube. I don't know. Haven't worked out what to call it yet. So that's that. And I think that's all the plastic parts. So what we're left with now is the manuals. Okay, so there's two booklets. So this one here is the assembly. So we've got a guide on types of tools required how to approach gluing, and then how to clean up as well. And then we get into the assembly. So first step, we're gluing together all the detail onto the tracks. So these are all the, the tread parts glued onto the rubber. The drive and also the idler wheels, and then we have the road wheels. Drawing of the tracks for the center. So the center drive down the, the, the middle of the, the hull. Over here you can actually see the middle of the hull. We've got the supports for the bumper. They're getting put into place with the little uh, poly caps. Got a base here. This will be the base that holds on the, the shaft for the observation tower. Move on to here, put together the, the two sides of the hull onto the base. Center drive caterpillar goes inside. This is the tensioning section. So for the moment they just get pushed into place. Next we assemble the observation tower, so you can see how it's multiple pieces with a spring down the centre. So this uh, is designed so when you press it down it'll stay in the place, and then when you press it again it'll pop up. So multiple pieces here to make the actual dome. Over here we get into, this is the actual uh, back of the, the turret on the tank. 
No, actually I'm wrong. That is a support bulkhead for the inside. So this round part is a support for the observation um, tower. Putting together some of the side turrets and additional, I think there's a rear turrets. That support is glued onto the inside of the hull. And then we've got the top of the hull getting attached to the bottom of the hull with the idler gears. So they're just getting pressed onto those tensioners. They haven't been screwed in as yet. And you've got your, uh, your hatch covers going on, machine guns going into place. Here's the uh, rear end. So you've got uh, multiple turrets here, all the hatch covers, door, and then this is that skid plate, which looks like the, the Renault tank type skid plate. And we're getting towards the end here. The tracks go on making sure you get the uh, the direction, like the curve of the, the, the tread in the right direction. There's a little screw that's screwed in for adjusting the track tension. We've got the track covers now. A few guns and turrets going into place. Main gun turret getting constructed here. So we've got the machine gun on the side, main gun, secondary gun. We've got the lights going in. So there's a spotlight with the clear lens. We've got a little turret there. So there's the two little turrets that are at the back of the main turret. You've got the gun support. You see these are the L brackets and the poly caps to allow the gun to be moved up and down. And then all the final details too. You've got the cupolas. And then some other uh, guns going on. And then final assembly. So you have your observation tower. That's just lowered in and rotated. So it's got a bayonet mount. The cover's going on. And then we've got the, the turrets as well and the bumper there. And here it just shows you how the little observation tower can go up and down. And the turret is just rotated into place. So that's your construction completed. And then we're left with this one. So we've got some basics on a little bit of history on the design of this particular uh, vehicle. This is a history on tanks and of the obvious um, resemblance to the Mark I and Mark II British tanks of World War I. And here's actually an image of the interior cross-section. So this is one of the images which is inside the sketchbook. Let's see from the front. I'll just slip this across here. So you see the gun in place. See so many of the pigs which are inside the turrets. So There's a really pack full of people. Got the driver just down here. A gunner. Got someone sitting around in a little bedroom maybe. Little bunks. All these little pigs sleeping in there. You got the ammunition magazine. Engine section. The observation tower. You got the kitchen just in this section. And then you've got some more gunnery here. And some storage and drive. Really interesting. Then as we go further, we've got a the painting guides for the figurines. Up here, this is the paint guides with Tamiya numbers, GSI numbers. So these are the water base ones and these are the lacquer base numbers. And then the guides of which paint code to use where. There's also English there too. So there's your commander, you've got your soldier, your soldier with his goggles up, there's the pet pig, the butler, engineer, and the chef with fry pan. And then on the back we have the painting guide. So there's no decals included in this kit, everything is just painted. So just two colours, dark yellow and flat earth. So really wonderful. Such a classic kit. So there you go, there is my unboxing of this very rare, I mean they do re-release these from time to time, and this is the full figure version of the Asuka Akuyaku number one, which is a design from Miyazaki Hideo. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that. So thank you very much for watching, and if you have any questions for me, please leave them below in the comments, and if you'd like to see more content like this, please think about subscribing. So thank you for joining me.